Alright, so we've got a case here that's not working right. And we pop the top, and this is what I find. Basically, the uh, coil looks a little frozen there. Got a little bit of ice on it, just a little bit. So this is a self-contained, it's not on a rack or nothing. So uh, the compressor's right up on top there, and as you can see, it's running right around about 69 degrees area. The other ones are fine, and they're running, you know, around the 33, 35, whatever. And that's discharge band temperature there. So we're going to check the defrost clock, put this into defrost, and see if it uh, works or what's going on with it, and kind of start from there. All right, so we went ahead and checked some of the other condensers up here. They're running right at about 5 defrost. This one's right at about 4. Went ahead and checked my set points. And when I was checking my clock, it showed negative 6 as my temperature sensor. This is set for 28 degrees with a 4 degree differential. So I went ahead and flipped my uh, switches there, and that's why the clock went blank, or the thermostat went blank. I'm waiting to see if it pumps down. So I have a funny feeling my temperature sensor's bad, but if the temperature sensor is bad, it should have shut off since negative 6 is a lot lower than 28. So we, uh, kind of waiting for it to pump down here and see what happens. I'm not real sure exactly. Uh, so we'll just keep on investigating. Gonna go ahead and try out my little magnet dew hopper here. It's not spinning, but I've never seen it actually spin. Put on one of these other ones, see if it works. Try it on this one to see what happens. Look at that. Wheels on the bus go round and round. Supposedly you can put this thing on a freaking uh, circulator pump and it'll uh, tell you which way it's spinning. See how that, there we go. Clockwise. Counterclockwise. So you have a north and south pole, so. So it does work which is nice to know for 18, 19 bucks, which I think is a little crazy. I'll put a link down in the description down below. Got it on Amazon. If you guys want to support the channel type thing, we got tools that I use all listed down there. We're back over at this thing, and what's weird is you can feel it vibrating. So it definitely is not picking up any type of magnetic field. Um, thing is, though, the pressure switch is not shutting it off, or something funky is going on. Time to do a little investigation here. Let's check that suction pressure. I'm going to probably open it back up, put it back into regular mode. That way, uh, not being a negative by chance, it's malfunctioning, which is what it seems like it's doing. But All right, so it's pumping. I've got like 200 pounds of head pressure. 12 pound suction, which, you know, the coil's frozen solid. That's not... Uh, calling so if this was actually working why is it not pumping down into a negative you know because it's not powered so it shouldn't be running we uh, can try valving off the receiver there and see if it does its thing because the off pressure that ends at like 60 and cuts out a few pounds under that it's just below it Seems a little out of whack. 404, it just seems a little bit, a little jackery. So, not sure why that's not pulling down. That's kind of odd. Kind of curious here. Let's uh, actually do it the easy way. Back this thing down and see if she pumps down and shuts off. Obviously, that might need some adjustments on that pressure switch. Well, there's shut off. Interesting. Interesting. We're checking out the one beside it. And it runs pretty high pressure too, with a little higher differential. I'm assuming the cutout is truly the cutout, not the differential. So, let's put this into defrost and see what it does. See if it pumps down, shuts off the fans, and actually stops because 
ones over there have not shut off yet. They're still running over there. I found a, some paperwork, but it's not our true schematic, just kind of a wiring layout. It's just things only, you know, 05, so it's only, you know, 16 years old. Answer fans still run. You'd think they'd shut that off. You'd think the pan there for the compressor would probably shut off too, but it don't. It did de-energize the solenoid and kill the clock, but it's still running. Not really impressed. It's probably just timed off defrost. I'd have to tear it apart to see if there's actual heater elements, but probably there are not. So we'll put that back the way it was. Yep, heard a click. She's a spin. So, yep. Well, I'm just gonna have to focus on that other one. It seems to me we just got a uh, pump down issue. Compressor never shut off, but why it, it's almost like the solenoid didn't work. Okay, so we're gonna do one thing at a time. Go ahead and kick that back out of that. The gauge looks like it might be reading a little better. It's getting up to 19 there, so that sensor must be in the ice or something. It's gotta be in some crappy spot. All right, so checking our pressure switch, 65 for a cut-in comes out to about a 27 degree evaporator. Looking down in this mangoided mess, nothing's really labeled. We've got this little paper sheet here, which didn't do a lot of favors for you. We got an LT switch, so is that a limit switch, PR switch, pressure switch? Doesn't tell you where it's hooked to, what it goes to, doesn't show the internal wiring. So this is pretty much about worthless, unless you know where things are going. Doesn't tell me how it's wired, whether or not they would normally shut off the condenser fans, which makes sense. but. You can see there we're not up to 65 for pressure, so it's not uh, coming on, obviously. So this thing's just got some issues. It looks like a timed off defrost. So we're probably gonna need to either grab the pump sprayer and uh, some hot water and see if we can melt that coil out. Once uh, we get that pressure up and get it running, I'm gonna valve off that uh, receiver and see if it pumps down normal and then find out whether or not that temperature sensor or something's going wacky with it because I don't know how you had negative seven. It really depends on where they have mounted at but uh, I suspect if it's in the coil you might possibly have been able to get down to that but I highly doubt it. Um, I suppose anything's possible. It, it really makes me think that we've got some uh, leak by going on in that solenoid there. So we'll just gonna have to investigate until we get to that point. But right now we've got to clean up the mess and get it running. Okay, so it just finally came back on so we're running about a 10 degree there, so let's go ahead and put it back into the so-called defrost, which is just going to turn off that solenoid. Let's verify the solenoid is powered first. It is powered. So let's go ahead and flip this like that. Let's see if that drops. And let's see if this thing shuts off like it should. Solenoid is uh, de-energized. Slowly, slowly dropping. We're getting all kinds of different things going on here. That's way lower than it needs to be. Still going. Pressure switch is acting up. Oh, there he goes. Interesting. I mean, I definitely would like to see that raised up a little bit. <clears throat> we'll see whether or not this thing holds. Right now, it's working like it should. That's weird because my suction was a lot higher than that earlier. I have a feeling that maybe it's through. Very possible we've got us a solenoid or a uh, pressure switch maybe it's shutting off. Even if the pressure switch worked or didn't work and that solenoid was closed, although it wouldn't do the compressor any good, it surely wouldn't froze the evaporator. 
which leads me back to the solenoid not shutting completely and leaking through. So we can undo this again. Okay, just released, it's coming up. So there it goes. Now with this having a CPR valve, which is kind of interesting, honestly. Got a hellacious amount of uh, shake there on it. All right, so let's pump her down one more time here. See what we might do here. Adjust that pressure switch. There, that's a little bit higher. Maybe that will help out a little bit. See whether or not that causes any issues with it not uh, staying off, which I don't think it's going to. I mean, you might get a little bit of rise. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get this coil thawed out because things are starting to look a little more normal. It's kind of amazing how much that's melted. That's not even the coil on top I thought it was, but you can definitely see the coil still thaw uh, frozen in there banging the fan blade on something. All seem to be going the right direction. All nice and dirty. So let's get those screws pulled and see if we can melt this ice out of these coils. Alright, so we got everything melted out of there. For the most part, just a little bit at the very very bottom. Uh, like I said, this has got a pan underneath of it that goes to a condensate pump and pumps to the top to evaporate out. So I didn't want to flood it with water, which is what I would have preferred to have done with. But we're pretty clean and clear. I made it uh, match the other ones. It's at 5 defrost now, so the four for 30 minutes each time, which should be more than adequate. They run this at 28 degrees, which it's because it's an open case like it is. So um, we're going to run this a few times now, see if we can get it to act up. I know the pressure switch currently is working, but we don't know for certain if it's acting up intermittently. Even if that, like I said, there's no reason for that to have frozen up if, you know, other than the solenoid not closing completely. So uh, it's a possibility. So we're going to have to run it a few times. Hopefully we can get it tacked up. Otherwise, we'll probably be back again. Went ahead and washed the fan blades off. The rest of this stuff looks like uh, crud, but we're just focusing on the important stuff. So. Uh, I did what I can do as far as airflow. We'll get this plugged back in and we're gonna continue testing forward with it. So I already went ahead and cleaned off some of this on the other one. It's always a mess, which is exactly what we would have out here if I tried cleaning all that up. You can actually see the fan blades through that hole now because it sucks that air in through there and blows it down through the coil and then through the back of this thing through those holes. If you don't have good airflow, you're gonna have issues, but I'm not gonna say that's what's going on because it's not. So we got her all back in there. It's nice and clean. Now let's just get up here and see if we can get this thing to act up. She's staying pumped down, which tells me that the solenoid's holding. Five pounds is plenty as far as the pump down part. Um, kind of kick this thing out of the uh, so-called defrost. You can see what happened here. That pan is completely full. I can feel heat off of it, so hopefully it boils that out. Looks like that was just big enough. Just big enough. From what I see, these fans don't shut off, which is kind of wasteful, but it appears that's how they all are. So it must just be back uh, 15 years ago we didn't conserve, I guess. I don't know. So let's go ahead and kick that out. We'll cut this thing. I got it set up for 5 defrost there. Just about every four and a half to five hours area. She's kicked on. Should be about 65 area. Not where it came on at, it had no problem at all. This night glass don't look too bad. Supposedly it was flashing a little bit the other day. So we'll check head pressure too. I wanna, wanna see the whole, uh, oh boy. I just kicked on dumping more water in there. That's not good. Ooh, doggy, that is not good. So I went ahead and got a little bucket for a big bucket so that I could get some of that water out of there because it's starting to 
overfill. So we got that there. Head pressure is a little high. I've got the film uh, filter media out, kind of checking things there, making sure that's clean. All right, so I brushed it out. It don't look too bad. Got that clean. You can see that heater is kicking butt. It's uh, boiling that water out. But suction don't look too bad. Still ain't finding anything that really says why it did what it did. Kinda still poking around trying to find out. We're at 33 degrees. Like I said, check the head pressure. It's a little elevated, but not horrible. Side glass is full. Thermostat. 31. Set for 28. So everything's looking pretty normal. This kind of sucks. Nothing's like standing out. So let's see if we can put it back into a pump down again. I'm not into replacing things if we're not sure what's going on. If it don't do it, I'm not sure what we're going to do. I mean, obviously, if it was sticking on that solenoid valve, it would have probably uh, leaked through there. Yeah, it could be adjusted a little bit more, but it seems to be holding there. I'm gonna see if I can find that sensor for that and see where it's at. Because with the way it was reading real low like it did, it really makes me leery that it's accurate. Okay, it goes down, down to the top there. Okay, I can see the sensor in there. It's in the air band. It's in the back wall. So they're doing it based off a of discharge, which a lot of their sensors here are done that. So they must have that sucker in the uh, freaking coil. Interesting, I didn't see it when I had that out. Okay, adjusted it a little bit there. It's actually shutting off just about at five pounds. Still holding there. That sensor is down there in the, uh, right above the coil. Very likely it could be j driven down into the coil. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this right up to the point where it could go into a defrost and see if it can push itself into it. I think that's about where it would be ready to go into it. We're gonna let it go for a while and see if it can go into it on its own. I've seen them failure to be able to pull themselves into the defrost, but yet they track time, so we're gonna try that first. All right, so it just shut off. I uh, pushed it right up there to the point where it would uh, not turn freely by itself any further. It shut off, went to about five pounds like I set it at. Boiling that water out, so maybe it is powered all the time, which is good, which is what it should be. It's shutting off the sensors down there in the coil, which is why it was so cold. Can't tell what it's doing now because of the way they wired that up. So, um, at this point, I'm kind of wondering if the clock isn't uh, malfunctioning randomly. Uh, no real good way to know for certain if that's what it is, other than you know replace it and hope that fixes it so I may have to just put it in their ballpark and let them make a decision what they want to do. I turned it up on the thermostat because I don't want to wait all day on this thing and it's disengaging the contacts. That was one thing I was wondering about. Um, you know as it stands if that was welded shut and never opening then that would uh, make it run non-stop and we only have a half an hour off. Uh, you know it could have been could have been it but it um, it turned off so and pump down. So we're going to put this back to where they had it at, which was 28, because it's in the band. There, it just kicked on. Going again, so I'm going with the clock. It's the only thing it can be. Um, unless there's something random, and you know. So it's the only thing I can come up with. Only logical thing. I mean, in theory, if it was defrosting, it should have been able to overcome it, because, I mean, this is an open case, so... Uh, I don't like it when you can't get a definite, but when it's clawing in and crawling out and doing what it needs to do. So we'll go ahead and I strip this out of one of the Rosslins. So we'll go ahead and get her in there and get her up and going. Okay, from what I'm seeing there, it looks like 05, 38th week or month. So this is 2005. This looks like the original clock. We got the new one in there. Um, we're going to go with that. Everything pumps down and kicks on like it should. So I went through and looked at some of the other ones. I wanted to see how they were set up. This one here is set up for, I think, 
8. The other one was set up a 10 degree differential, which if you went with a 10 degree differential, it would be at 38 when it comes back on, and that's truly in the air band. I'm going to go with 8, just because, you know, I don't want to change things too much. That'll come on about 36. That'll give it a little more time to thaw out. I hate changing things, but when you have all these weird oddities and nothing's really standing out obvious, uh, educated guesses don't really work out real great, especially when everything's working fine. But I guarantee if it did it once, it's going to do it again. So at this point, we went ahead and went with the new defrost clock, um, put a little more differential in the uh, thermostat. Like I said, we've made sure that the thermostat opens when it uh, uh, reaches temperature by reversing the temperature, obviously. Uh, we're at 32 down there, so it's holding pretty accurate there on that. The band down here is showing that we're running 35. So we should be pretty good. Uh, other than that, uh, guys, this is going to wrap things up. If you guys like the video and you want to see more like it, give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Check out us on Facebook. And until next time, guys, we will catch you on the next one.